And uh, firstly, I'd like to thank all of the Giants fans for their tremendous support in what has been somewhat of an up and down and, and disappointing season. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank Farhan uh, Zaidi for his six-year tenure as president of baseball operations. I've certainly enjoyed working with Farhan, have nothing but respect for him and, and, and wish him well in the future. I also want to thank Kristen Posey for agreeing to this. <laughs> Is that maybe one of the biggest sacrifices with four young ones at home? We, we certainly appreciate that. I mean, we all know Buster as the player, you know, all of the tremendous memories that, that uh, we had with him and him leading us to three World Series, um, the Hall of Fame MVP career. But it's th those aren't the reasons that we're here today. I think for, for me and, and for the board, you know, what we have observed with Buster and in, in working with him over the last three years, is that competitive fire he has to win. Um, it, it didn't end when he took his jersey off. It, it's as strong today as ever. You know, I, I've grown to respect his, all of his skills and how he deals with people, his intellect, how he listens. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a we uh, mentality. And I think just really all of the skills you need in, in being a leader. Also, the pride he takes in the Giants organization and, and, and the responsibility that it comes with representing the Giants organization. So I think we believe there's no better person to lead the baseball side and set the right tone at the top for the Giants organization. But I think, I think the, the most important is just his desire to build the kind of team that lives up to the expectations of fans, of our fans. So uh, without further ado, I am thrilled and, and proud and privileged to uh, turn it over to our new president of baseball operations, Buster Posey. All right. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate the kind words. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited to um, have an opportunity to be in this role. I'm excited to be a part of the team again. Um, San Francisco Giants organization is all I've ever known. Um, you know, and I think over the years as a player and in and, and the role I was in the last few years, um, I, I gained a pretty good sense of, of what it means to fans um, to have great players and have great teams. Uh, I think back on some of my earliest memories walking into a spring training clubhouse and walking in and seeing Willie Mays sitting at a table with Willie McCovey and Gaylord Perry. Um, Juan Marichal, uh, Joe Malfitano. Uh, you know, the next week, it's, it's Will Clark, Jeff Kent, Barry Bonds. And I always appreciate it. And I don't think I'd appreciate it as much when I was a younger player, but as time went on, I appreciated just what that meant, uh, not only to the community, but to us as players, and that there's a standard and expectation as, for being a San Francisco Giant. And uh, it's a privilege to uh, try to go out there on the field and, and uh, hold ourselves accountable to that standard. Um, you know, th those guys that I mentioned, you know, you can go more towards my era with, with Kane and Linscomb and, and Bumgarner and Crawford and Belt, and you could go on and on. And in my time, what, what I, again, what I came to realize is, yeah, sure, all of those guys were, were great players. Um, they were part of great teams. Um, but what those guys ultimately meant to the San Francisco Giants fan base and the community uh, was memories. And all of us that are lucky enough to get to be involved in baseball in whatever capacity, I think, uh, understand that, that not only is it the greatest game in the world, but uh, we're in the memory-making business. It's, it's ultimately entertainment. It's an opportunity for for grandparents and parents to uh, share memories with friends. It's an opportunity for stranger, strangers sitting out in the bleachers um, to share a great memory that happens at the ballpark and that can be talked about from uh, that time on for, for the rest of their life, potentially. So, um, you know, with that, all of that in mind, I just can't uh, say again how humbled I am to, to be in this role. and again, be a part of a team that's uh, hopefully looking forward to making, you know, more great memories for this, this fan base and community. Um, with that, we can open it up to questions. Just a reminder, if you have a question, to please raise your hand and we will get you a microphone.
start here with Susan. Hi, Buster. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, what was the process like for you as you were trying to determine whether this was something you wanted to take on? Could you go through that? Well, as Greg alluded to, it was convincing my wife, um, <laughs> number one. Uh, you know what? I mean, I, again, I, I'm so passionate about baseball. I, I know I finished uh, a few years ago, and, and, uh, but, but just the, the opportunity, again, like I mentioned, to be a part of a team, um, I, I think the, the chance to be in a position to hopefully elevate people that are all a part of this, elevate staff, elevate players, and uh, to, uh, to again, it's, it's a, we're in a memory-making business, and uh, sure, sure, winning's great, and uh, ultimately that's our goal is to you know, be a playoff team every year and, and compete for a championship. Um, but I think just the, the overall big picture of, of being something, being a part of something that's bigger than yourself was really appealing. Let's go to the left, Janie. Hi, Buster. Hey. Good morning. Uh, what, what sort of did you gain over the last couple of years doing this, doing, doing some of this behind the scenes in terms of the business side and, and maybe trial and error and what worked and what didn't and maybe a couple examples that... Uh, that you'll take into this position now that you're doing it every every single day. Well, I think you know, for, first and foremost, I have I have a lot to learn. Uh, just being a day day and a half into this, um, there's a I've already had some conversations and plan to have a lot more conversations. And one thing I'm very confident about, and because I've known these people um, for a long time now, is there's uh, a tre tremendous amount of great people in place that are. Um, on the same page and, and wanting to work to, to get this team uh, where we all know it should be. Um, you know, I, I think it's, again, it's what I'm excited about are the relationships. It is about, uh, you know, having a common vision and, and working towards a goal and having a standard of, of what the, uh, the expectation is to be a San Francisco Giant. Susan? Buster, what, what do you think the rest of your front office might look like? Are you planning on any changes there? Yeah, we're, we're going to hire a GM. Um, that's that's going to be one of the first uh, tasks right out the gate. Um, you know, Pete's been made aware that um, he'll be moving off the GM role, and we'll, we'll kind of work through what some other responsibilities might look like for him. You obviously don't have a lot of experience in this kind of role. What's your response to people that that discuss that, you know, your relative lack of experience and what that might mean for who you're looking for for a GM? Yeah, I mean, it's fair. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And, and again, I, I, I do think a strength of mine is that I'll be, uh, I'll be all ears and listening and taking in um, information from people that have been doing this for a long time. And um, I, I do think it's important to, uh, to that we, we bring in a guy that's or a girl that's been, um, you know, well versed in, in all aspects of, of front office. And, and you know, I would add that that we have a very deep and experienced front office with people like Jeremy Shelley that, you know, could take on the job. So I, I think there is a nice compliment. Yeah. Let's go to the right, Mark. Hey, Buster. Um, when did you know that a more day-to-day -day operations type of role might be in your future? Does it go back to when you moved your, your family here, or has this been more of a recent development? It's been more recent. I mean, it, the, the move back honestly had nothing to do with um, what my future might look like with the Giants, which I think for us makes it all the more special because it truly was a move back because we enjoy this area and we enjoy the friends that we've made in this area. And I think just over the last you know few weeks, months, we've been kind of – talking through some different scenarios um, and uh, it's where we landed. Let's go to the back left, Tim. Well, Buster, just give us a sense what your general philosophy is going to be. I mean, are you, are you going to use analytics in, in, in a significant way? Are you going to, you know, assume, you know, you have an analytics staff. Is that something you, you want to push forward? And what just generally are you going to look for out of your, out of your club? Uh, most definitely going to use analytics. I mean, I think that uh, the, the analytics are, are here and they're here to stay. And, and 
it would be a mistake to to say that you're not going to use that information. Um, you know, as, as far as you know, general philosophy, I, I think it's as as many of you know me. A lot of my you know basic principles are pretty simple. I, you know, I want us to be known as a as a team that's uh, you know the ultimate uh, prepared team, um, one that's fundamentals are held at a really uh, high standard, and ultimately. Uh, this is all about the players. It's all about putting great players on the field. And I think our job as the, as a front office, as, you know, with Bob here as a coaching uh, and the coaching staff is to be able to um, identify those players and then get the most out of them. Let's go to Andy. Uh, for Greg, um, you know, if, if this was an arrangement that you were looking for with Buster having quite a bit of influence um, you know he could have had that influence in maybe more of a less uh, out in front capacity uh, and hire a, a, another president that would report to him why was it important to have him sort of out front on this I, I think it, it was you know there's a lot of different scenarios you could come up with but I think Buster is just somebody that asked for the ball here and and uh, um, wanted the accountability of not trying to kind of work with other people and 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 uh, you know that's really what a leader does and i think at the end of the day you know we, we talked a lot about um it, complimenting uh, his skill set with with hires and building around him to build for success and i think he was very you know agreeable to doing that so um you know it started kind of early discussions and then then we i think we both got comfortable with the idea of of if you know bringing in experienced gm to to work uh and take some of the load off. But really, you know, I, it, it was really Buster's desire um, to be accountable 100% for, for baseball, and I think that, that uh, spoke a lot to me, that he, that he desired that. Let's go to the front right, Ann. Hey, Buster. How did you convince Kristen? <laughs> but I have a follow-up, too. Uh, you know what, I think Kristen, uh, she's... I've been so just blessed to have such a supportive wife um, for, believe it or not, it's been 15 years. Yes, I, we got married young. Um, I, I think she knew she could just tell how excited I was about uh, this opportunity and, and uh, you know, that it, in our relationship, it goes both ways. If, if there's something that she's excited and passionate about, I want to support her in that as well. Do you feel do you feel the brand has been tarnished in recent years? And besides winning a championship, how do you invigorate, reinvigorate the the brand, the the sense of who the Giants are? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say the brand's been tarnished. I mean, <clears throat> again, I think that's a lot of discussion we're going to be having over the next you know weeks and months is is about our identity. You know, and 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 again, I want to be clear, like our identity really boils down to the players on the field and the way that they play and and uh, the type of players they are and how they handle themselves not only on the field but in the community. So um, I, I think that's going to be a big part of discussion is like what, what really is important to us as an organization and, and what are we going to hang our hat on at the end of the day. Let's go to the front right, Sam. Um, Busters, this is for you and for, for Bob as well. Um, what do you imagine the, the vision for what Giants baseball will look like with, with you kind of running the show here? You know, like on a day-to-day, -day, you know, on the field, what, what is your vision for what Giants baseball will look like going forward? I mean, again, I, it, it, it really, hopefully what it's going to be is <laughs> we all love, I know Bob loves good, crisp, clean baseball and guys that are going to be uh, – uh, always prepared. I think um, what I can draw on from a player is knowing that if I went into a game and I know I had prepared to the best of my ability, no matter the outcome or result of that game, I could be satisfied with that. And that's, you know, for me, I'm hopeful that our guys are going to get there and, and uh, that's going to be something that, that is really important to them as well. And for me, just probably a little bit more well-rounded team to where we can win you know, in different ways. And if we're not swinging the bats well, we play good defense, we pitch, we execute, you know, we manufacture at times. So I think we, we just need to focus on all the different areas to make our team better and, and to be able to win games in, in different ways. 
And Bob, what, what excites you the most about being able to work with Buster? Well, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's Buster Posey, it's the Giants. That's a big deal. So, you know, like Greg said, when, you know, somebody like Buster asks for the ball, you give it to him. And he's meant so much to this community, to this baseball team, to the organization, the city, all the above. Um, so that's what I'm excited about is being able to work with a guy that's had that type of success here in this organization. I can say I'm really excited to work with Bob as well. You know, getting to, uh, as a player, see him in the opposing dugout. Um, if I ever made eye contact with Bob when I was playing, I never felt like he liked me. And I think he, he uh, might I admittedly didn't. <laughs> and, and, and I never made eye contact with him either because he was always making my life really difficult. <laughs> So I'm, 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 uh, I'm happy we're going to get to share some more uh, uh, endearing glances, I guess. <laughs> Let's go to the left. Janie? Hi, Greg. Uh, when it comes to spending money, I mean, he's also in your ownership group still, correct? So was, is that a, does that streamline anything when it comes to free agency or acquiring someone and, and just... Uh, you know, the spending and, and how it gets done and knowing that you have a close communication? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it certainly helps. And, you know, one of the questions was, well, well should, should you have him uh, continue on the board in that role? And we think absolutely. And, and like Larry, who runs the business side, has been a board member for a long time. It just helps the overall communication. If there's anything, you know, if you ha like any board, if you have a conflict and you want to talk about somebody's contract or something you step out of the meeting it's very easy but you know having them there does that does help um, but the communication on things like that are going to be more day-to-day -day anyway as they come up rather than you know having a board meeting or things so let's go to the back alex hi greg this is for you last year you answered a question about the luxury tax but in the time since the a's have left the bay area the giants are now the only team in this massive market do you expect the franchise to be a perennial luxury tax paying team going forward or nearly? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the same answer we had last year that, we, that we're opportunistic, we're strategic. We don't set a number every year. We look at what we need to do and we will, at, like we did last year where, where you had a, you know, a couple of good uh, um, players available at the end, you went over the luxury tax. So I, I think it, it, it's just, we will do it if we have to and we will spend what we need to put a, a winning team on the field. You're listening to Let's Buster to Posey's back. introductory press conference, president of baseball operations for the Giants on 95.7 The Game. A year ago at this sta same stage when Bob was introduced, uh, Farhan said that Bob had a three-year contract, and as we found out, it was actually a two-year guarantee. Um, just wondering about if there will be better transparency and will... Do you have terms, Buster, or as an owner, are you just in it for as long as you want to do it? Are there years involved? Yeah, and, I mean, and, I, and as well, will this will will Bob have any kind of extension, or will he go into next year as a lame duck? Yeah, one, I'm not sure transparency is required for uh, discussing contracts anyway, because I think they're they get in the way of running a team um, during the year, and a lot of questions that come up that are very disruptive. Um, so, you know, Buster does have a three-year deal um, with no contingencies or anything. But my, my view is, I, we've, I've had this debate and discussion, is whether any contracts with, whether it's your manager or head of baseball, should be public because I think it doesn't serve uh, the team very well to, to raise questions during the year. So that's something that we, we, we would consider. But, you know, as far as the transparency, goes i think we were as we were we were as transparent as we needed to be on that and, and bob's contract situation with will, will there be an extension or will he go in next season as um, that's for buster well that's <laughs> who i'm asking you know i look <clears throat> again this is this is day two for me um i've said how much i admire and respect bob and uh, one thing i'm going to try to do as this uh continues to progress is you know you guys have known me in the clubhouse. The, the cliche of going day to day um, is going to apply to this as well. And again, I'm excited about working with Bob. I, I, there's not many managers, active managers, that have uh, the track record that he does. And uh, from from my uh, experience talking to numerous players while I was playing and then post playing. Um, 
to to a man, everybody loves playing for Bob Melvin. And, and just one more, um, Farhan earlier this month let go of four scouts. And will you bring those back? And you mentioned that analytics are here to stay, but what will the balance be, if at all? Because, you know, last year, this past year, and throughout Farhan's time, it was mostly new school, not much old school. And will you, do you want a better balance? And, and, and what about what about those scouts? Yeah, again, I mean, I, for me, it's, it's understanding where people are, what people are doing. Um, I will say from a scouting perspective, I, I value scouts uh, very much so. Um, you know, I, I look to Brian Sabian and, and his scouting background and, and uh, as much as anything, whomever is working in the Giants organization as a scout, if you're a scout, if you're a, a trainer or a strength coach in rookie ball, I, my goal is for those people to be empowered and understand what they're doing on the ground is extremely significant for what we're trying to accomplish here at the big league level. So can I give you an exact answer right now? I can't. Let's go to the back left, Brian. Hey guys, all three, uh, congratulations, Buster, and we'll look forward to talking to you. Uh, this morning on KMBR, we had sound from September 2022 when you were joining the ownership and you said, I'm not here to get involved in the front office day to day. <laughs> and here we are, so something changed. So what changed, what did you see that you didn't like that made you ask for the ball? Well, again, I, I think it goes back to my opening statements that, that I've seen what great players and what great teams can mean to this community. And so to have an opportunity to be a part of a team that supports the, the ultimate team that's out there on the field was just really appealing. Um, I, I don't think there's much more fulfilling that much yeah, much more fulfilling than being able to be a part of something that's bigger than yourself. And uh, again, you know, Greg mentioned Jeremy Shelley, who's been here for 30 years. There's just so many great people that I've gotten to know over the years that are still a part of this organization that I'm just thrilled to be working with. Let's go to the left, Maria. Hi, Buster. Congratulations. Um, just what were your takeaways from the 2024 season and what do you feel like the club's biggest needs will be heading into next year? Well, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it, it felt like one of those years where it was just hard to get a lot of momentum. You know, I think Bob would probably be able to speak on that better. For, but just from what I saw, it was, seemed like one of those years where if the pitching was going, the offense wasn't or, or vice versa. Um, look, you know, I hate, I hate to be, probably want more specifics, but ultimately as a group, our, our goal is to put the most talented baseball players on the field, whatever position that is, you know. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking for going into the season is, you know, who can we, who do we have in the system? Who do we have currently on the major league roster, um, that we see as, as players that are going to, or that are going to mesh together to, um, get us back on track. Let's go to Marty. Congratulations. Um, how do you assess this team that you have now and how much work do you have ahead uh, right now as you as you look at it because you've been here to watch the last couple of seasons Yeah, I think Marty similar to to the way I just answered it is um, Ultimately, we just have to play better baseball. You know, we've got to we've got to pitch better. We've got to do the little things better. We've got to um, the, the margins are just so small between winning and losing when you're talking about the best players in the world competing on a, a, a nightly or daily basis um, so I think that's going to be a big focus is just um, for us as a group to understand that all these little decisions or actions um, that take place over the course of the year can have a big impact on the end, end result. Let's go to Andy. Uh, Buster, sort of dovetailing off that, I mean, you're taking over from Farhan, who's very good at working the margins and very active. How do you just imagine the mechanics of your day-to-day -day will go? Are you going to be on the phone with Bob after a Wednesday night, finding out what lefty you can get to Houston the next day, or you know, um, how much do you plan to delegate, and how much do you plan to really just have your fingers in this day to day? Yeah, I mean, I think that remains to be seen. Um, again, I, you know, I mentioned empowering. We're gonna we're gonna bring a G, bring in a GM, and I think once that comes in, some of the delegation will will take shape a little bit more. Um, I want to be uh, as as useful as I can to be with all the people that I'm working with, but also having in mind and understanding that it's somewhat somewhat of a del delicate balancing act to where um, I, I don't want to be the type of leader that 
is constantly feeling like somebody's I'm looking over somebody's shoulder as well. So I think a lot of that is going to be handled over these next weeks, month, as we start to have more conversations and, and get synced up more. Okay, we'll take three more to the left. Alex? Hey, Buster, you played for two very different kinds of coaching staffs. How do you envision your coaching staff, and, and also will there be any changes um, from this previous group? Yeah, I think we're, we're uh, you know, we're very happy. I know Bob's happy with his staff, and uh, the uh, as far as changes goes, I think we have to look and see where people are at personally um, and where where some contracts are but I know uh, speaking with Bob he's very happy with the big league staff obviously you've got um, guys on that staff with a great track record um, that I think can uh, that players can identify with really well and there's a nice mix of uh, you know some younger people in there as well um, sorry what was the last part of your question how do you envision your ideal staff I guess compared to you had Bochy staff, and then you played under Gabe. How would you like to see that? Uh, again, I mean, it's it's all about it's the players first. And I think that's what you know. What I learned about Boch over the years is I always felt like Boch was pretty easy on us as players. Um, but what I learned as time went along, he beat up on his coaches pretty good. Um, and I think. Uh, Again, from my experience with, with with Boach and Sabes and talking with Bob is the understanding that ultimately your job is a supporting role, right? Our job in the front office is a supporting role. Our job, uh, their job as, as a coaching staff is a supporting role. So, you know, I mentioned uh, a balancing act and a fine line to bags on, a, on another question, but I think one of the, one of the challenges is going to be with all the information we have now is is going to each player and and a lot of this does fall on the coach is how much information can you give that player before it's too much before it's diminished returns and understanding that this guy's not exactly like the guy sitting right next to him in the locker um i think that's a in, in today's game that's a big part of um preparing for the game whereas early on in my career that was that really wasn't a big part of the game so um we want, we want guys ultimately to, when I say guys, the guys on the field that are out there every single night and day to be accountable for their own careers. And I do think we live in, our, in our, this day and age in our baseball world where there is so much information that it's easy sometimes to shift blame for one reason or another. And uh, ultimately, I, I do ho hope to have a group of guys that no matter what, they can be accountable for, for their own selves and careers on the field. Susan? Buster, obviously a big part of this job is dealing with free agents, and I know you can't talk about uh, potential free agents until the season's over and that period begins, but you guys have a pretty prominent free agent of your own. What are your thoughts on Blake Snell and potentially bringing him back? When might you start talks? I mean, Blake's, Blake's one of the, you know, premier starting pitchers in the big leagues has been for a while and the run he went on the last 12 or 14 starts i think i saw a quote from bob it was um really like nothing you'd ever seen so he's obviously somebody that's going to be a priority for us to to take a hard look at and uh you know make a decision as a group last one to justice Hey, Buster, uh, as far as looking for a GM, uh, what are some of the ideal traits that you look for? And given that free agency is roughly a month away, what's your ideal timetable as far as hiring a GM? Yeah, to answer the back end of that first, I mean, I think it's right away. I think we, we get going on this right away and um, get some potential candidates in and, and get interviews going. As far as qualities, I mean, I want, I want a, a leader. I want a servant leader. I want somebody that, again, is going to empower um, the people that are working with them and for them. Um, you know, ideally somebody that does have somewhat of a scouting background, I think will be important for me as well. Um, you know, and again, having in mind that, that this today's game is so much about uh, meshing what your eyes see and your instincts are with what the data is telling you. Okay, that will conclude today's press conference. Thank you guys so much for attending and Buster, congratulations.